At 2 a.m., my phone on the bedside table rang. The screen lit up with the name Amy. Concerned about a call at such an hour, I quickly answered. Hello, Amy, I said, but it wasn't my daughter on the line. It was Lily. Mom's crying. Please help, she said, her voice shaking as if she was about to cry herself. Dad hit Mom and left, she added. Confused and alarmed, I hurriedly got dressed and jumped into my car. Entering the living room, I found Amy slumped on the floor crying. Lily, who had tried her best not to cry over the phone, was now sobbing uncontrollably, her eyes and nose bright red as she opened the door for me. It's nothing serious, Amy said, her cheek swollen and red. What happened? I asked. Listening to Amy's story, I felt a chill down my spine. Holding the crying Lily close and stroking her head, I softly spoke, the next one who's gonna be on the floor crying will be John. My name is Michelle, 57 years old. I lost my husband two years ago, and now I live alone. My joys in life are visiting my daughter and son-in-law's place, which is a 30-minute drive away, watching my four-year-old granddaughter Lily grow up and trading stocks, something my husband taught me. As I trade, I often consult my husband in my heart. Should I sell this stock now, or should I wait a bit more? I feel like I can hear him advising me to hold on or to sell now. Strangely, when I follow that advice, I often profit. My daughter, Amy, is 29. She got married five years ago, and since Lily's birth, she's been a stay-at-home mother. Her husband, John, is a salesman. I used to think salesmen were well-paid elites, but apparently not. It seems John doesn't make much, and Amy started working from home as a writer last year. They rent a single-family home, which isn't cheap. Yet, juggling child care, house chores, and writing seems challenging, and she hasn't been producing much work. That's why I help my daughter out financially every month. It's just money I made from my hobbies. If it helps my darling daughter and granddaughter, then I think it's worth it. Men have their pride, so I told Amy to just keep it a secret from John. John seems to be really busy at his job, and it doesn't pay well. When I visited, he would often take a quick shower and leave right after discussing something with Amy in the upstairs room. Joan being a salesman sure seems tough. I need to prepare materials for tomorrow. It's work, so I can't help it, he would say. I'm sorry to leave while you're here. I'll be back soon, he'd add. I watched as John left in his suit and murmured with a sigh, I worry he's gonna wear himself out. Amy gave a wry smile. She looked a bit discontented. Peering into Amy's face, I asked, are you upset because he didn't get to eat the meal you prepared? No, it's not that, she replied with a hint of reluctance. If both your dad and mom are busy and you feel lonely, just call grandma, okay? I said, pointing at my icon on her phone. I had her call me multiple times to make sure she knew how. I thought if I could be someone for her to talk to when she's feeling lonely, it would be good. I never expected this to come in handy in such an unexpected way, I thought to myself. At 2 a.m., my phone, which was by my bedside, rang. Groggily, I searched for it, wondering who would call at this time. I saw Amy's name lit up. Worried something might have happened, I quickly answered, Hello, Amy, but it wasn't my daughter on the phone. Grandma, Mom's crying, help. Lily's voice, on the verge of tears, desperately reached out to me. Confused, I didn't know how to respond. Dad hit Mom and left, Lily explained. I thought I misheard. He hit her. I asked. Yes, please help. Lily pleaded again. Can you put mom on the phone? I asked. No, mom won't respond, no matter what I say, Lily replied. I quickly changed and jumped in my car. Arriving at their house, I rang the doorbell and Lily opened the door. Over the phone, she had tried her best to hold back her tears, but now her eyes and nose were red from crying. She must have been terrified during those 30 minutes before I arrived. Where's mom? I asked. Lily pointed towards the living room. I patted Lily's head as I walked down the hallway with Lily hiccuping behind me. 
Entering the living room, I found Amy slouched on the floor, crying, her disheveled hair covering her face with one hand. Her crying didn't just unsettle Lily, it disturbed me as well. Emmy, what happened? I asked, giving her a gentle shake. Mom, she murmured, looking dazed, seemingly not understanding why I was there. Where did he hit you? Show me, I said, gently moving her hand away. The cheek she had been covering was red and swollen. Annie let out a whimper and covered it again. It was just a slap. It's not a big deal, she said, her voice trembling. I couldn't possibly think it wasn't a big deal. Even if it was just a Marival spat, I couldn't believe he would hit her hard enough to cause that kind of swelling. What happened? I asked, wetting a towel and pressing it to Amy's face. Well, I never told you before, Mom, but it seems like Joan's been cheating, Amy began. Cheating, I exclaimed. Yeah, he told you he was going back to work the other day, but he actually demanded money from me. How could going back to work require so much money? Amy explained. I don't know, but suspecting him of cheating just because of that, I trailed off. I accidentally saw the notification on his phone, and the messages were from a woman with sweet words. He's demanded money several times before, that's why I refused today, and then he hit you. I asked, aghast. Yes, and he almost hit Lily too when she tried to stop him. I stepped in, and in the end he took money from my purse and left. Amy finished. Listening to Amy's story, I felt a chill run through my heart as my eyes widened in shock. What shocked me the most was that John tried to hit Lily. I've been wondering if I can continue living with a man like that, Amy said, clutching my sleeve tightly. Suddenly, Lily burst into tears, probably recalling the traumatic moment. I was livid. Cheating was one thing, but laying a hand on family was downright despicable. I wanted to shout at him, isn't it a father's duty to protect his family? But preaching to him wouldn't make a dent. If a lecture could reform him, he would have come to his senses the moment he tried to hit Lily and would already be showing remorse. Holding a sobbing Lily close and stroking her head, I said calmly, next time, it's going to be John who's crying on the floor. What? Amy looked at me anxiously. Can you stay with John a bit longer? I'll move in with you. We'll buy a voice recorder and record all your conversations with him, I proposed. But what if he demands money again? He might try to hit Lily, Amy worriedly asked. Record it when he asks for money. It's okay to give him the money. I'll always be with Lily. We need to gather evidence after all. As long as Lily's safe, I'm okay with it, I assured her. Amy nodded with the determined face of a mother. Then I took a picture of Amy's face with my smartphone. The swelling would serve as evidence. The next day, I packed up my things and went over to Amy and her family's house. It seems Amy isn't feeling too well, so I'm gonna stay for a while and help with household chores and take care of Lily, I announced. At my sudden arrival, John looked surprised and had a guilty expression on his face. We can't trouble you like this, Michelle. I can help around the house and with Lily, he offered. Lily's quite active, you know. I hate to see you get worn out, he said, showing genuine concern. That's okay. What I'm really worried about is whether the lunch I make will be enough for you. But keep it a secret from Amy. If you're still hungry, use this to buy something. I discreetly handed John $200. Gosh, I feel kind of bad about this, he scratched his head. Anyways, he put the money in his pocket. He couldn't object to me staying now. From that day on, whenever John came home, I decided to stay in Lily's room and play with her for at least an hour. This was to give John a chance to talk to Amy without being wary of me. As soon as we finished taking a shower, it's my turn then, John would say with a smile. On the surface, I got along with John, but as soon as he stepped into the bathroom, I checked in with Amy, I admitted. He thought it was odd when you suddenly decided to live with us, so he asked me if you had said something, Amy giggled before continuing. John asked me if I had said anything to you, so I told him about you hitting me yesterday, Amy said. 
Don't tell her about it or I'll hit you again, John threatened. He didn't realize I was recording, so he dug his own grave, Amy chuckled. Seeing Amy laugh like that was reassuring. She seemed like a completely different person from last night. I hope my presence here can be of some encouragement. Amy and I nodded in agreement. First things first, the next evening while John was in the bath, what we did was check his messages. We were looking for signs of an affair, but to our astonishment, John seemed to have relationships with several women. He has a child, yet he still does this. Amy voiced her disgust under her breath. If he was cheating with women like this, no amount of money, even if he's rich, would ever be enough. Let's meet up, maybe hit that hotel again. Yesterday was awesome. While slowly scrolling through these messages, I took a video of John's entire smartphone screen. Hold on a minute, is this? Emmy paused and stared intently at the screen. The chat showed the message, come by my place again next week, Mr. Salesman, dated from the previous week. Emmy frowned at the message, especially at the heart emoji at the end of it. So he was hitting on clients too. In sheer disbelief, words failed us. Looking up at the ceiling, we both let out a heavy sigh. The next day we went for a legal consultation. A lawyer named Mr. Ramirez listened to our story attentively. He then told us that the video capturing the chat alone wouldn't suffice as solid evidence. He said that having pictures of them entering the hotel together, hotel receipts, or credit card statements would help. This message from last week, I paused the video we were watching, pointing to the message that read, come by my place again next week, Miss Salesman. So next week means this week, right? We might still catch them. We decided to hire a PI right away and asked him to investigate. The PI would look into John's activities during work hours, including how much time he spent at clients' places. Three days later, the PI got back to us. After going through the report, we nodded in satisfaction. Fantastic, keep up the good work, we told the PI. Now that we had evidence of Joan's infidelity, we started planning a trap for him at home. I withdrew $50,000, some of the money I had earned from stocks, from the bank. I then placed it in a dresser on the second floor of Amy's house. That dresser was in the guest room I'd been staying in. The dresser was practically empty already. While John was at work during the day, we had been moving our clothes and personal items to my house, readying ourselves for a quick move. With the drawers being empty, the money would certainly stand out. Neatly bundled $10,000 bills with bands will surely catch John's eye. I gave John 200 the other day. How long do you think that'll last him? I asked, to which Emmy replied with a tilt of her head. It varies when he asks, but if he thinks you have money too, he might have already run out. Well, the timing might be just right then, I said. We quietly closed the drawer with the $50,000. That night, as usual, I took a bath with Lily. Just as I began to undress, my phone rang. It was a call from Amy. I had asked her to call me if John ever asked her for money. I told Lily too. Wait a sec, and tiptoed up the stairs. Outside the room I was staying in, I eavesdropped. Money again. What are you spending it all on? Shut up. Your mom might hear. Just give it to me. You gonna hit me again. If you don't want to be hit, hand over the money. I'm in a hurry. I heard the sigh of Amy followed by the sound of the drawer opening. What the? Why do you have so much cash? Just as the drawer closed, I slid the room's door open. I'm sorry, Amy John. I was about to take a bath but felt dizzy. Could I lie down for a bit? Are you okay, Mom? I lay down and Amy immediately put a blanket over me. Even John, usually smug, clicked his tongue softly and left the room without a word. After a while, I heard John leaving through the front door. We need to hurry. We gathered the money from the dresser, took our belongings, and left Amy's house. The next day, John received a call from Mr. Ramirez, the lawyer. A date was set, and with Mr. Ramirez present, the divorce discussions began. And so, I dialed up John's office and said, 
I have something important to discuss. I identified myself as Joan's mother-in-law and asked to speak with the manager. After conveying the matter, I requested they keep quiet about the conversation until the designated day and hung up. With that, everything was set. On the day of the discussion, John visited my house. I had told Lily to stay upstairs and not come down. John didn't hide his discontented face, and without greeting me, faced Amy and heavily sat down on the couch. Mr. Ramirez greeted him and handed over his business card. John hesitated for a moment before nodding an acknowledgment. So what's this about you wanting a divorce? Facing Amy, John bluntly asked. Yes, I want a divorce. Also, I'd like alimony for abuse and child support. What? Are you kidding me? You leave the house saying you want a divorce out of the blue, and now you want alimony and child support. Mr. Ramirez, she's the one causing all this trouble, he banged the table, glaring at Amy, and turned a frustrated face to Mr. Ramirez. I have evidence of you cheating and also of physical abuse. She placed a photo on the table taken by a private investigator showing John and another woman exiting a hotel. Following that, I played an audio recording I had taken on my phone, which had John admitting to the violence. Hey, you tricked me, huh? Recording sneaky stuff like this, huh? He raised his voice and lunged at Amy, trying to grab her collar. Both Mr. Ramirez and I stepped in to stop him. Calm down. If you get too aggressive, you might find yourself in legal trouble. After Mr. Ramirez's stern words, John calmed down and settled back into his seat. While I'm trying to listen to both parties here, if this settlement doesn't proceed, Amy's considering filing for divorce or suing. She seems to have her evidence in order and doesn't seem to be backing down. Mr. Ramirez subtly urged John to be reasonable. Lost in thought, John finally spoke up, saying, but, in a loud voice, even if it was me who cheated, I still have the right to claim a share of the assets that Amy has, right? Yes, if you make the claim, replied Mr. Ramirez, then I'm claiming. Too bad, Annie, I don't have any assets left. Hand over half of yours, John said smugly. I don't have any either, Amy coolly responded. What? Liar. There was $50,000 in that drawer. Oh, that, that's mine, upon hearing my words, John exclaimed. What? You see, my mom has been helping me out every month. Even the money I gave to you was from her support. If you divorce Amy, I don't see any reason to help you any more. In fact, I told John in a low voice, I feel like pressing charges for you hitting my precious daughter. John turned pale. Unfortunately, it seemed more like the shock of not getting any money rather than my words that got to him, but we weren't about to let it end there. And these, Annie placed several more photographs on the table. They showed John visiting a house while on a sales call. You were there for an hour and a half. Do sales calls usually take that long? What were you doing inside? Upon hearing Amy's words, John snorted with laughter. You know, sales involve explaining the product and stuff. Sometimes it takes long. I get asked questions. Oh, really? Amy smirked and placed another picture. So explaining the product means you got to strip down to your underwear. Must have been a heck of an explanation. In that picture, John stood by the window shirtless. Through the sheer curtain, though he probably thought it concealed more than it did, a woman in lingerie hugging John was clearly visible. Her face was recognizable even through the lace. Ugh, John choked on his words. Amy placed a sheet of a four paper. I had a detective keep an investigation going. This is a list of your mistresses. Compare this to your company's client list and we'll know just how many customers you've been involved with. By now, John was rendered speechless. Just then, the doorbell rang. I stood up. Perfect timing. Hearing my words, John whispered, no way. I thanked the person at the door and led them to the living room. Seeing the person, John screamed in horror, boss. Clutching the photos and list from the table to his chest, John cowered on the carpeted floor. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. 
I'll pay alimony, child support, anything. Please, please forgive me. Amy and I exchanged glances inside. It's a shame, but you're too late. We've already made copies of everything. Amy and I presented the photos and list to the boss. As the boss went through them one by one, speechless, only John sobbing echoed throughout the room. Unsurprisingly, John got fired. Moreover, he lodged a claim for damages for cancellation of contracts by the company. The mistresses, too, are playing innocent, claiming they were tricked, seduced, or even forced by John alone. It's karma, I think. Of course, Amy's going after him for every penny in alumni and child support, using Mr. Ramirez as her representative. John couldn't pay everything he owed and not even his rent. Rumor has it he was evicted from his home. Come to think of it, Amy mentioned seeing him doing some unfamiliar road construction work. He looked like he was about to cry as his younger co-workers yelled at him. As for us, the three of us live happily in my house. Amy started working. I look after Lily, but I don't find it hard at all. On the contrary, every day is fulfilling. Even though we live together, sometimes Lily calls with Amy's cell phone. Love you, Grandma. Hearing that cheerful voice all...